We are live. Welcome to Iron Fist Season 2 Thoughts. So, yeah, I really love this season much, much better than the first one. So, yeah, let's dive in. So, the first episode, The Fury of the Iron Fist. Which I think was is referring to Danny's reaction at the tomato meter score for the first season. So yeah, great season opener. You know, we open on an armored truck heist where Danny looking closer to the comics stops them afterwards. And I I like the look they give. I um I don't love when later we see we see the fight between Davos and <laughs> yeah. The fight between Davos and Danny. There are a number of those. The one I'm referring to specifically is where they are like, let's see, there's like a some fabric connecting the two of them, and they're fighting in Kunlun, you know. And they have what I will 100% acknowledge look very close to the comics. I don't think they completely work. I'm glad that there's not a huge amount of this season where they're wearing, where either of them are wearing that. Now, but but yeah, you know, he stops them after the heist, and we find out that Colleen is helping another Asian become a citizen. She no longer fights because she feels that she failed during the Defenders. She's doing well at doing good, and I I really I think more fiction surrounding vigilantes need to explore what how how is the best way to to make things better is it fighting or is it this kind of uh, what let's see what is it called local community action uh chair not not charity yeah you know helping helping the community like this because someone might watch the season and be like well i don't have an iron fist but I could help at the local community center. So, I mean, if it's good enough for Colleen Wing, it's good enough for me. Let's see. And Danny has moved in with Colleen. I think they have some some sweet moments together in, in this season. Let's see. Oh, that's right. Mary is in the season opener. She really... She Is she in... I'm not sure she's in every single episode, but she is there from the start of the season. And Danny is now determined to try working hard and has asked Ward to make sure the company balances social responsibility with profits. And I'm pretty sure they do have someone, you know, either Ward or Danny point out he might not be the best choice for that, but, you know... And Joy wants out of Rand. And Mary finds threatening post-it notes and opens water faucets. It was, it's like, at first, you're, you're not quite sure what is going on on this. I mean, apparently she's from the comics, so, you know, there's that. But, yeah, I, I thought it was a, a quite good. And, and let's see, it's this don't move my things and... Don't leave the apartment. Stuff, stuff like that. You know, I mean, these are threatening. That, like, if it wasn't disassociative identity disorder, I would think she was like being haunted. Like the the place was haunted or something. And we see the oh, that's right, the box with the with Colleen's family crest. It's also in the season opener. And Ward walks out of a serenity prayer has sex with Bethany, the sponsor, in the closet. That's right, yeah, so that also started... Wow, the, the season opener really does a good job of setting up, like, a lot of the overall... Let's see... Yeah, and, and Davos and Joy trying to get up. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's, there's some setup for almost every major plot thread of the season. Even... Yeah, because Danny working for Albert, Albert brings up, you know, maybe there'll be another triad war. So, yeah. And I also, I, I quite like, I mean, ultimately there wasn't one, and that's a that's a cool misdirect. Like, I thought, oh, triad war, you know, we, we, that's not 
it's not exactly the first piece of media that's done a triad war, but, you know, sure, fine, that sounds like it could be, but no, instead, we see Davos going around killing a lot of criminals, and the triad actually tried to broker a peace, you know, so, so that was great. And... Yeah, Danny and Colleen, you know, have a dinner, talk about how bad the stuff they had to eat was when they were training. And I like that, like, at the last thing Colleen says, Danny's like, there's no way that's true. But points for creativity. And I like that, you know, this was one case where the, yeah, the, the woman won that kind of thing. I, I, I still think it's, like... By and large, I love the, the Deadpool movies, but I really do feel like it's pandering to the frail male ego that, no, no, don't worry, you know, Wade is better at the, at coming up with ridiculous, you know, horrible things that were, were done to him during childhood than, than she is, just, yeah. Now... Yeah, and we find out the hand left a power vacuum, which, you know, quite realistic, and I really appreciate, yeah, uh, you know, I'm not saying every piece of superhero media has to be realistic, but I do appreciate that they are, you know, they were clearly devoted to that for the, for the Marvel Netflix shows. And Davos tells Danny, walk with me, alone, which sounds like a lonely road. And the end of the episode is Danny unleashing his rage. Even that was set up in the season opener. So, yeah, really nicely done there. That brings us to episode two, The City's Not for Burning. And... Let's see. Yeah, the episode, the episode opens on the Hatchet Men killing a tiger. And... And Danny runs into Mary and because she... As another episode, Danny takes her to the apartment, and yeah. So at that point, I had the th I, I started to theorize maybe she has DID, and I started to fear that they were going to do a love triangle between Danny, Mary, and Colleen. I am really, really glad that they didn't. That would have been so bad. Like I, I like how it's even like Danny just immediately, you know, when when Mary, I, f I forget exactly what. But but she she says something and he's like I I hope you didn't get the wrong idea I didn't mean to lead you on, you know I I I live with my girlfriend you know there's no like he's not like ah oh, this you know this object's into me, which was there's there's way too much of that in like eighties and nineties, American yeah, and the the you know Colleen never is is never like. Why did you bring her to to our house? Are you planning to cheat on her? You know, it's just, oh, is she, is she okay? You know, she she hears that Danny was worried about Mary, and instead of being jealous, yeah, you know, because this is what trust looks like. Let's see. You know, Danny is not the type of person who would cheat, and Colleen knows that, so they don't have it. Yeah, uh, yeah, the fights are a lot better in this season. And, yeah, we get the multiple flashbacks to Danny fighting Davos, over who go, goes up against the dragon. I don't think they ever did say it outright, but Danny kind of implied that the reason that the Thunderer, or their father, I think they also refer to him as, the, the reason that he called the fight for Danny is he saw in Davos a, a mean streak that he really didn't, yeah... Now, Colleen talks to the teens. BB even apologizes for pulling a gun on her. She really seems determined to solve conflicts without violence. And a lot of this, it, like, ultimately she does still fight some. But, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, but, right. Yeah, so episode two sets up the... Or did the, did the teens appear in the season opener? Maybe not until... Episode 2, but something like that, yeah. And... 
Ward is a jerk to Katie, at least at first, but tries to improve the relationship. Ward and Joy talk again. She realizes he's an NA. She brings up his balls again. I... That's not something I'm going to miss about this show. There are things. I'm definitely going to miss things about this season. But Joy, out of nowhere, talking about, you know, gross and balls ward and these various, just, yeah. It, not, not you know, it's fine that a uh, uh, woman is being crass. No, no problem with that. It just, I feel like... I guess this time it didn't completely come out of nowhere, but season one, it really felt like it came out of nowhere. Let's see. Negotiation, not war. And Joy arranges for Mika and Davos to have sex. I appreciate that they didn't feel the need to show that and the, and the blackmail and the whole thing. Because, yeah, like, why wouldn't it work? It's not necessary to show us. If this season had 13 episodes, I bet we would have seen it. So, yeah, really glad that they trimmed this one to, yeah. I need to get to Mira. What does that mean? Why did I say that? And Davos hates this tactic, grabs Mika by the throat, but that doesn't put her off. Let's see. And, yeah, um... You know, it would appear that she is maybe even into that kind of thing. And yeah, we see Davos never yielded. Thunderer called the fight. Mary calls Danny and Colleen's landline, hangs up on Colleen after realizing Danny isn't there. Colleen is understandably very confused. Why do I still have a landline? Which brings us to episode three. This deadly secret. I like Colleen's and Danny's conversation where one of them says might makes right, and they talk about Matt and the hand. Ward thinks that the other people at NA told Joy. Tells Danny that Davos is working with Joy, implies that Danny is whipped. I really appreciate Danny calls him out on being a dick. I like their relationship so much better in this season. Like, Ward is still. Let's see. Uh, Brad Jones, you know, in his video on the first season, said that by the end of the show, by the end of the first season, Ward has gone from being a dick to a dick with. A conscience, or some something along those lines. Is he still a dick? Someone is watching you. Someone willing to give this season a shot, even after the first one. It is kind of funny hearing Joy bullshit about how she and Davos met. Like, the, wow, that was... <laughs> like... I don't remember when the last time I watched four people just... Engaging in such deception, like every all four of them know that what Joy is saying is not true. And like Davos, he doesn't so much look like, oh, you know, my romantic side is going to be revealed. He looks like, oh my, are we actually doing this? You know, and and Danny and Colleen, I I really love. Like if you haven't for a while, go back and rewatch their reaction shots. Like they are really, like is, oh uh -huh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. It's, like it's not so much that like obviously don't they don't actually believe a word of what's being said, but it's also this kind of thing of like you're really going through with this. You're really going to lie to to my face so so blatantly just yeah. What? Chefs do that. It's funny watching the dinner with both sides being sus, trying to suss out what the other knows and wants. One more domestic crack out of joy, I'll deck her. Wow. I, I like the bit where t t Colleen almost does a spit take as a reaction to what Joy said. And Colleen tries to get them all to air their grievances. She really is serious about trying to solve conflicts without... So, yeah. 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, Ward continues to be paranoid about who told Joy. As his sponsor points out, he always leads with asshole. And we find out Joy was the one who paid for the surveillance photos of Danny and Par Parley. P A R L. And that brings us to episode four. Target Iron Fist, which sounds like a direct-to-video sequel to, to, yeah, that would come out in, like, the 90s or early 2000s. And, yeah, Colleen has some great lines to Mrs. Yang when Danny is dealing with Mr. Yang, and Knight wants to help the situation Colleen and Danny are in. Turns down tea when they don't have coffee. I, I really like, like, she's not even gonna... Oh, uh, gee, sure, um, uh, um, uh, I'll take a cup, you know, no, 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 she's like, okay, I'll pass, like, she, like, she's not even trying to pretend, like, she, the look on her face and the tone of her voice when she turns down the coffee, the, the, the tea, when they don't have coffee, it's like, who doesn't drink coffee? You live in New York, like, she, she... <laughs> She looks like she's barely she she can she can manage to to stop herself from going on a rant about it, you know, but it's, it's yeah. And let's see, yeah, that's right. Yeah, she she shows up in episode four, and is there for a lot of the season. Yeah, this has this season has much more. Night in it than season two of Luke Cage had Colleen and Danny in it. Now, hmm, Claire didn't show up at all this season. They actually, they specifically, they were like, "Can can we call Claire?" And Knight was like, "No." So, yeah, I I saw someone say in their in their review of Luke Cage season two. They've basically done all they could with the character, and maybe that's true, I guess. So let's see. I'm not sure there's much reason for her to show up in Punisher Season 2. She wasn't in Punisher Season 1. Uh, Karen was, but... Yeah, but the... I guess it is possible she might show up in Daredevil or Jessica Jones. But... Maybe not. She wasn't in... Yeah, anyway, moving on. Yeah, Knight reveals to them that Danny blew an undercover cop. I mean, undercover op. That is a good way to show that he's going too far. Knight is grateful for the arm, but does t tell Danny what has to happen. And Walker tells Joy, stop touching my things. Joy realizes that she has DID. You know... I just thought she got confused, like, Herschel. Walker. And the, yeah. Um, I think this is when she, like, she's, like, choking out joy to, to release tension from the, yeah. Yeah, expresses her frustration with DID. I like the scene of Knight and Colleen talking when Danny is not in the room. And... Davos kills tigers to get into the crate with the dead Iron Fist inside. And... Let's see... Yeah, and we see... Um, Walker fighting Danny. Maybe she watched some of season one and this is how she's... You know, airing her grievances. And she takes him to where they're doing the ritual so that Davos can become the Iron Fist. I gotta say, so I think I think this was the episode that like opened with the shot of Danny like basically get, going unconscious and and you know Walker standing over him, and then it goes to a scene where Colleen talks to Danny and she's like. Could it have been Mary who did this? Until the end of the episode, I thought that the that Walker attacking Danny happened at the start of the episode, and she just for some reason left him behind. Didn't you know? Didn't 
do anything after he got knocked out. But I, I really don't. Please put in the comments if I missed something. But I'm not sure what the reason was for putting it at the start. It wasn't something that, like, bothered me. But it's just, it's one of the only things in this season where I'm like, I didn't think that worked. So, that brings us to episode 5. Heart of the Dragon. So, let's see. Yeah, so Davos now has the Iron Fist. We get a flashback to when Davos and Danny were kids talking about the Iron Fist and the Hand. Colleen might try to find Danny, maybe through Ward. I really appreciate it. Walker is very different from Mary. Alice Eve is doing a great job acting. I'm not sure. I, I don't think I've seen her in very many things. But, yeah. Absolutely excellent performance here. And Ward talks about how expensive Knight's arm is. So she implies she's happy to rip his off so she can so he can have it back. That was really great. And it is also like... What... Like... Yeah, he's he's leading with asshole as as usual. And Danny loses a fight against the teen gang members. And Davos says to the Flying Tigers leader that the trad war is over and demands a list of all criminals in New York from the guy working for him. And we see Priya very tough on Davos after the fight for Iron Fist. Really love seeing Colleen and Knight together. It's too bad that they didn't get a Daughters of the Dragon spinoff. They share excellent chemistry. And we find out that for police in the MCU, 616 is code for possible super person in, yeah, superpowered person involved in crime. That's great. You know, the 616 is the comics continuity, so that's a great reference. Danny tries appealing to BB, but it does not work. And we see Davos talk to Priya for what he doesn't know for sure is the last time, but we do. So, you know, that further underlines, you know, there is a lot of pain that he blames Danny for in his past. Get over here! And Knight and Colleen save Danny. And Ward says that Walker is Batman. I mean, bad news beyond. Too bad that movie's canceled. It sounded like it might be good, but I have a lot of faith in James Gunn, so. Yeah. And it kind of seemed like the DCU, they were just greenlighting any movie that they thought would have an audience, and it's like. I like the idea of having a plan. I love Knight expressing confidence she can take down Davos with Colleen. Walker offers Joy stopping Davos. Let's see. Very cool fight between Walker, Knight, and Colleen. Danny talks about his mother's last words. She said she loved me, past tense, and I never got to reply, Oh, Mom, you're embarrassing me. Is this the part where I say the L word? A l l l l lesbian ah! And Joy tells Danny the truth. And that brings us to episode six. The dragon dies at dawn. So you better be punctual. Knight interrogates Joy and Walker. I, I like the editing. I will admit, at first it threw me off a little bit. I was like, is she interrogating both of them at the same time? But, you know, once I got into it, it really worked for me, the, the way that it was edited. Instead of, like, having several bits of her interrogating one of them, and then we get the interrogation of the other, it kind of goes back and forth between them. Yeah, I, I think it worked. I, 
I guess I see why some people said Di Di Danny was sidelined for Knight and Colleen. I like it. For, for sure, like, there there's a chunk of this show, maybe like 20% of the show, that's basically a backdoor pilot for a Daughters of the Dragon. Like, they were basically, you know, they're, they're not just like, you know, briefly suggesting that they're, they're basically, like, you could edit scenes from this, from season two of Iron Fist into a pilot episode for a Daughters of the Dragon. And yeah, it really, really sucks that it didn't happen. Uh, let's see. And Walker frees herself, but instead of leaving, she goes to Danny and says, said she can leave him to Davos. Lead, wait. Yeah, lead, lead him to Davos. Yeah. I love Knight and Colleen discussing snacks. And after Knight goes off, Colleen says it's the most boring thing she's ever heard. That was really, really fun. Like, you know, Knight is like, I said I wanted, you know, this thing. This is this is like teriyaki. And Colleen is like, okay, next time, drive me to a gas station with a better selection, you know. And then, like, Knight just, you know, yeah, goes off about this, you know, the the um, her experience with you know how you got a snack to to work on you know Colleen is like you know they say that hearing someone else describe their dreams is the most boring thing in the world I think they're wrong and they talk about the future and instincts and I can't help but notice a lot of Davos' vigilantism happens off-screen. I don't think it would be as obvious if there was just a little bit less of it, but, you know, you do gotta... It's the it's the rising action, you know. He's making, like... And and certainly the... the ah, what's the word? Um, you know, it's, it's preventing a triad war because they'd rather ally than face Davos, so... You do kind of have to have a lot happen. And it's it's a budget thing. I get that. And Joy and Ward have a conversation. And Joy says to Ward, Y-T-A, or you're the asshole. Knight and Colleen talk to the Crane Sisters. She speaks. I love their fight. Knight uses the bionic arm to knock one of them off a motorcycle as she drives at her. That was, yeah. The pain was unbearable. It was like binging season one of this show. And Ward and Joy talk once. And they discuss the ritual reversal. I also I felt like the the narrative was always moving in in this season like you know they they get to the the ritual of moving the the power from Danny to Davos they get to that pretty quickly and then this thing of you know okay they have to reverse the ritual and they don't spend forever on you know without making any progress on that I love Walker pointing out Danny is in no condition to stop her from killing Davos. And Walker described what she wanted for a future, a safe place for her to be with the DID, because the US military did not take care of her even though she was a veteran, and as we find out in episode 7, she actually specifically got it because of what they had her do. Like, it wasn't that, oh, it also happened, no, 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 they had her in Sokovia, she was brutalized. And, yeah, the, the, and then they won't take care of her. Let's see. Uh, well, I mean, okay, the, so the, actually, yeah, I guess we don't know uh, how much she has to pay for the DID medication. If at least some of that is subsidized. But, yeah, considering how little the U.S. military takes care of its veterans, I think, you know, and, and I don't know if, 
you know, it, it was a bigger theme in the first season of The Punisher than here. So maybe someone was inspired by watching first season of Punisher who was working on this, wanted to bring it in. Or maybe it's just, you know, happened. And yeah, another fight between Danny and Davos. Colleen and Knight talk about tattoos. Knight teases Colleen that she should get a tattoo that, you know, uh, a heart that says Danny in the middle. They are so good together. Like, it's it's that kind of thing. Like, you have to play it exactly right or it comes across as, wow, these two really can't stand each other, can they? Because the, a lot of the their dialogue with each other is kind of bickering, you know. So you really have to get it just right so that it comes across to us as what it is they really really get along and they're both the type to kind of they they uh what's the term they're the ribbing on each other you know because they yeah they're the type to they they can't they're not good at not saying harsh things but they can channel it into this this kind of yeah you know it's not really the the it's a, it's a different dynamic than when either Colleen or Knight are with other people. Walker turns back into Mary because of the rain and lights and says, I deserve a chance to be happy. And that brings us to episode 7, Morning of the Mindstorm, Turtle Power. Danny goes to the hospital. I love how casual Chen is driving Davos around, suggesting he live in a nice hotel. Maybe they could go out for better food. And Davos offer BB and the gang training. I really appreciate it. Like, that was basically... So, with BB and the gang, it basically is this thing of, you know, they need... I just remembered I put that late. I'll, I'll get to that later in the video. Now, yeah, Knight talks to another cop, learns they're not going to get any support. Danny is home from the hospital already, and it's clear it's not because he should be so much as he just, he's he really can't not, to, yeah. Davos has two iron fists, one iron heart, and Danny is scared. Danny's really struggling with slowing down now that he has to. And Ward is drinking when his sponsor tries to get him out of the bar. Ward ends up fighting the bartender and leaving the bar. Tender. And we see Walker create Mary in the prison cell, the running water and the cold. Back in present day, she pours out the pills. I don't personally know enough to say whether or not this is a respectful depiction of DID, but certainly I would say that the two, ah, uh, let's see, yeah, yeah, the the two, we, I don't think we do see the, the third altar, but she refers to it as maybe like poison, so, um, let's see, the, the character in the comics, uh, Typhoid Mary, I think, uh, you know, so, yeah, typhoid is something that has a very negative effect on the body, like poison also does. So, yeah, I, I think we only do see... I, I don't think we see that... See, is it the second altar? Because the one original identity... I'm, I don't know enough about this, but, you know, certainly Mary and Walker are shown to be sympathetic, like... Walker, essentially the worst you could say about her is that she's very, very hardened and cynical. But she's not, like, just some random killer. Like, she... When she feels threatened by... Well, when Davos threatens her, she decides that she's going to kill him because she doesn't want to risk anything. You know, she does knock out Knight and, you know... But ultimately, she's not she's not evil, you know, and she's not like sadistic or something. She she's very specific in choosing her targets, and really, like the only per you know, she doesn't kill Knight. She could have, 
or per like do really serious permanent damage to her. Now, and and yeah, Mary, you know, I mean, so, some people I'm sure think of you know, oh wow, she's really weak and and kind of pathetic. I mean, there's a you know, she's that's that's her way of coping, you know, basically. And again, like she's not like they could easily it's not like Mary is a threat to anyone. Like, you know, she's a little she's she struggles to to, to keep her bearings, but she never like really does something you know, and that's the, the, there's been this really negative stereotype about the, um, let's see, mental, mental health patients that they, they are really, really dangerous both to themselves and others. And that is true of some of them, but the numbers show that the, you know, people with mental, what's it called? Mental health diagnoses are more likely to be victims than perpetrators of violence. You know, I mean, essentially, there are some very famous, you know, characters in, in like, movies from some decades back where, you know, basically the, the killer is someone who has DID, and, yeah, the movie implies that they're a killer because they have DID, when that's... Just not. It's, yeah. I can't really give examples without spoiling those movies, but... Yeah. The, the, there are there are a number of those examples. I guess, yeah, let me know if, you know, if if you really badly want to know, even if it might... If, if you just don't care about spoilers, you know, let me know in the comments and I'll write out the examples. Let's see. Actually, you know what? It'll be quicker if I just... Yeah, so, okay. I'm going to hold up my index finger. If you don't want spoilers for these various movies, you know, skip ahead and choose to see me lower my index finger. Because that will mean I'm done spoiling. But, yeah. So, I'm trusting you to have either muted or maybe you don't mind hearing the spoilers but yeah so briefly we have psycho and really i think some of the psycho sequels also let's see then we have the yeah you know the movie identity has a killer alter uh split and glass uh let's see i feel like there's at least one yeah yeah there's a couple um yeah, Brian De Palma made several. Um, one of them is Raising Cain. I feel like there's at least one more. Uh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Let me think. Um, I don't know if maybe you want to count Mrs. Voorhees from the original Friday the 13th. Certainly... She, you know, she speaks in Jason's voice some of the time. So, yeah, you know. And that is it for the spoilers for other movies. For, for movies. Now, let's see. Yeah, Danny asks Colleen to train him. He's really struggling with his identity now that he is not the Iron Fist. And that makes a lot of sense. He was working towards being the Iron Fist for 15 years now he's been in for months and suddenly no longer you know it just it's completely foreign to him ward overhears that he impregnated his sponsor bethany and he seems like he may really care about his sponsor his lifestyle is wild he was living like a wild child trapped on a short leash paroled in police files and, yeah, Mary records a video for Walker. We learn that she was in Sokovia, which is a nice reference. And she accepts the Arizona plan, if that really is what Walker insists on, but she hopes not. Davos lived with the bare necessities. 
and Danny tries training by himself, and then we see Colleen back in sensei mode, being as hard on him as she was on her students in season one. And that brings us to episode eight, Citadel on the Edge of Vengeance. These are some really great titles. I love the buildup of the opening with both sides preparing for battle. It's not the brace. Murphy, it's you. I love that at first, for a second, we don't realize that Davos didn't make it to 3B before Colleen and Danny did. Like, we just, let's see, I think we see the, the you know, 3D, 3B on the door. And we hear, you know, and there's a knock there and someone walks up to open the door and we're like, oh, Davos is going to get, you know, and then open the door. It's Danny and, and Colleen. And yeah, Walker thinks maybe there is another altar in her since Mary thinks Walker did something in Sokovia that she knows she didn't. And, you know, Walker thought that Mary had, like, paid some people to get her out of there, so, yeah. The deed and the charter are in the credenza. So, yeah, um, I'll take words never spoken by people who aren't millionaires or billionaires for 500, Alex. I quite like the interaction between Walker and Ward, both of them very hostile in Joy's apartment. And Joy releases BB on the condition that he helped her find the bowl, and his sexist dumbass thinks at first that she's talking about just a bowl that she thinks is pretty or something. So I really appreciate that she explains what it is instead of just insisting like so much, Ameri you know, so many American media characters do. And let's see. Davos goes to Henry Yip trying to do something positive for the community. It doesn't go exactly as planned. Honestly, partial credit. And Rhino, who up to this point had been the leader of the young gang, is killed by the second in command, who along with the rest of the gang are sufficiently radicalized. I really appreciate this intelligent depiction of youths who have no direction. BB's willing to do the right thing, but the rest of them have been radicalized. It's all down to who reaches them first. And that's even, yeah, Colleen even says that in the, in the finale. So, yeah. Awesome fight between Danny and Colleen. Danny wants Colleen to be the next Iron Fist. She still is a much better character than he is, so, yeah, I'm glad that we got at least some of that in this season. It's too bad that we didn't get a season three or Daughters of the Dragon spinoff. So in season two, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist are all more extreme, and other characters point out how far they're going. Kind of makes me wonder if Punisher will do that too, but yeah, I guess I'll see fairly soon. Although, you know, the the very next one I want to say is going to be Daredevil. Yes, Daredevil, and then Punisher. And then finally Jessica Jones. And then I've done them all. So, that brings us to episode 9, War Without End. Danny admits he just wanted to use the fist, and he and Colleen discuss which of them should have it. And let's see. Joy lies to Davos, but he sees through it. And Crank tells Davos where BB is. I honestly thought that Crank had had a come to Jesus moment, but nope, he is just using the fact that Rhino is dead to trick BB. Yeah. And Davos push, pushes Joy over the edge. And Knight is like, get the bowl, fancy fist. And we get some backstory on Colleen's mom. Maybe a third season would have followed up on that. Walker reads her file, burns it, makes sure War didn't read it. And Turk arms Walker and Ward. Joy survived, but she's in a lot of pain and her cell is broken 
but BB does get Danny the bull. Very cool fight between Davos and that one hatchet man. I think it's the right hand of the... Yeah. BB is killed. Davos slowly walks up the stairs. Danny confronts him and tries talking down Davos, but fails, and they fight. And yeah, another great fight. Just all of the fights this season. So, so good. Danny manages to drug him. Colleen tries to talk sense into the teens, but they won't listen. So, yeah, another great fight. They start the ritual. Cool fight. Knight versus Chen. Warden Walker come for joy. Walker kills Chen, knocks out Knight. And Colleen manages to get the fist, but Davos still has his great episode ending. And that brings us to the finale. So, let's see. Um, a duel of iron. So, yeah, we get some narration, which I appreciate that they did eventually explain why. And it didn't take forever before they returned um, to, to the... You know, obviously we want to see what happens next. And usually the Netflix shows do jump directly to the... Yeah, so we see Davos bringing Danny... Uh, I forget what, but something soothing. And it's clear that this is right after they found him in the... You know, after the plane crashed. And yeah. Since the ritual isn't done, it's possible both of them will die if they don't finish it. Knight tries to escape using her bionic arm. And Walker sings as she prepares. Quite like that. Joy is on a morphine drip. Everyone should be on a morphine drip. There would be no more war. And, let's see, yeah, and, you know, Walker shoots at Davos, and Knight gets through the door using her arm, and, you know, Davos isn't stupid enough to just, like, make himself an easy target, so he uses the fist, and I, I forget what exactly it is, but he knocks something into the air that flies at the the um, yeah where walker is which of course forces her to change positions change places and yeah so we have walker fighting danny colleen fighting davos walker fighting knight and yeah danny uses water on Walker, it's super effective. Mary meets Knight, which I, I like, you know, because Knight, like, she knows but by this point. But, yeah, technically, she hasn't met Mary before, which, of course, Mary is, yeah. So Davos tries reversing the ritual reversal, but then Colleen reverses that on him. And Colleen won't kill Davos, and Davos and Danny talk about vigilantism with, you know, this thing of, you know, because Danny feels that Davos went too far, and yeah, you know, it is this thing of, it's, it's, I mean, the, yeah, see, the thing is, I don't agree with vigilantism in the real world anyway, but I definitely agree with Danny that what Davos did was going way too far. You know, it's basically, it's it's a, a power fantasy. We, we like the idea that if just someone who was really strong would go out there and do these things, then things would be better, but yeah. And Knight is going to get an upgrade for the arm, which is great. Yeah. Knight and Colleen are so great together. And Knight implies that, you know, either a third season of this or Luke Cage would have Colleen 
trying to take on Luke. Wow, that could really have been um, amazing. And yeah, you know, Knight has a point. The Iron Fist is one of the only things that she has seen make a dent on Luke. And, you know, she was... She wanted something to, to fight against him when we last saw her at the end of Luke Cage Season 2. So, yeah, makes a lot of sense. And, yeah, Danny is cleaning up the apartment. Colleen still wants to help the teen gang... I like the conversation between Colleen and Miss Yang. And Ward and Bethany, you know, Ward goes to a meeting and airs it all out in front of, you know, all these people instead of just having a private conversation with Bethany because this is an American show. And, yeah, basically Bethany does not want Ward to be there in the, in the child's life and... Yeah, you know, it is, uh, at the end of the day, like, you you have to, um, if you're not sure that, the, you know, yeah, like, like she says, she can't take care of all three of them, and she has to take care of the kid and herself, so, yeah, Ward isn't... Let's see. And, yeah, Walker talks to Joy about uh, possibly even another altar. I really like, you know, Joy is like pointing a gun at Walker, and Walker's like, oh, so I'm a loose end, huh? And Joy's like, no, I just, I just want it to be over. The mission is over. You never, what was the thing you said? You never... You know, you never saw me, you never met me, I was never here, you know, that you were never here, that kind of thing, just, you know, and, and Walker, I forget, I th yeah, I think she says something like, you know, our relationship isn't over, so, something like that, and, and then Joy says, don't I get a say in that, and Walker just, you know, dropped the, the perfect bit of, of snark as she walks off, that's my favorite thing about you, Joy, your sense of humor. Wow. And... Let's see. Yeah, and we see that, you know, Danny left a note for Colleen. Because he's a straight white guy. And, yeah, we get... that. So that's what the narration was. You know, it's his note to her. And... Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, Danny wants to investigate the legacy and Ward is coming with him and I, I you know we, we jump ahead in time some I quite like that Colleen does offer you know he she she's like you don't have to do this you know you can give yourselves up and they refuse to and you know her fist lights up the katana which is super cool and Ward is in a bar, and he is drinking water. You know, the other guy's drinking sake, but no, nope, he's he's gonna stay on the you know stay stay on the wagon. And yeah, it's you know turns out that he can't get the um yeah they they and that's again like it would have been cool to to look so so basically. The name, I already forgot, but the name they mentioned is apparently the last Iron Fist before Danny. So, you know, yeah, that, that could definitely have been an interesting, yeah. And, you know, Danny lights up his dual wield pistols and fires... You know, he shoots the bullet out of the air that the other person was like. So, yeah. Your mind is an open book. Then learn to read. You know, and and the... Um, yeah. I, uh, it's really too bad. I, I would have liked. You know, so, so yeah. Just briefly, uh, like in Defenders, I think... 
Finn Jones does much, much better. You know, it really is just the first season that I, I personally think. I, I don't, I think he's bad there. I don't think he's bad after that. And, right, so, that brings us to the, um, can't believe I'm blanking on what it's called. The, the ranking, yes. So, I think ultimately it lands... Um, yes, so, worst to best, I love all except for Iron Fist Season 1. So, Iron Fist Season 1, Daredevil Season 2, The Defenders... The Punisher Season 1, Iron Fist Season 2, Luke Cage Season 2, Luke Cage Season 1, Daredevil Season 1, Jessica Jones Season 2, and Jessica Jones Season 1. And I am just going to make sure I have... There we go. So, some critic quotes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so this is someone who did not like the Iron Fist villains. Davos is similarly unremarkable, lacking the screen presence or chemistry to establish himself as a worthy foil for Danny. When the show flashes back to Danny and Davos' time in Kunlun, it gains a little energy and offers Davos far more character motivation than Danny has been given thus far, but in the present day, their rivalry pretty much ends up feeling like a chest-thumping contest with no real stakes beyond excessive property damage. And let's see... Yeah, this person thinks it would have been more interesting than if, if the if the people Davos was killing were simply unlucky victims caught in the crossfire instead of the bad guys. After a season of watching Frank Castle mow criminals down while working through his own issues on The Punisher, it's tough to vilify Davos for essentially doing the same. Thank goodness for Alice Eve's Mary Walker, a.k.a. Typhoid Mary, who has all the charisma and unpredictability that Davos lacks, although that's all we'll say about one of the season's most compelling characters to watch spoilers. Let's see. Yeah, um, Misty Knight is a welcome shot in the arm any time she appears on screen. Her relationship with Colleen and skepticism towards Danny's whole shtick is one of the bright spots of the season. Come on, Netflix, greenlight that Daughters of the Dragon spinoff already. And yeah, uh, I don't think I have anything else to say. So I expect to try to do the review of this uh of Iron Fist, the the Marvel Netflix show. Soon, I can't say exactly when, but yeah, um, much much better second season. It's too bad that they couldn't have done this well with with season one. Um, yeah, the, yeah. That is it for this one. So, yeah, uh, not much Marvel Netflix left. I really am going to miss, you know, most of these. I, I'm, I'm okay that I'm done watching the first season of Iron Fist, but I am going to miss. I really, I feel bad for the actress playing Colleen Wing. I want to say, is it maybe, um, I'm not... Instead of butchering it, I'm just going to look up Jessica Henwick. I feel really bad for her. I hope that at some point I get to see her in something where she's really, really awesome. Uh, you know, it... Yeah, so, okay, season two of this was pretty good. I don't think Matrix Resurrections was her fault. Um, yeah, I think those are the only things I have seen her in. But, yeah, so, that is it. So, I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I will catch you next time.